We don't just talk about the news. We talk to those making news. This is the Steve Malzberg Show. A guy who called himself Sal actually flew to New York from L.A. and said that if I didn't stop interfering, they would kill me. I contacted the FBI, even though I'd had recent run-ins with them in a separate boxing investigation. My call led to my cooperating with the FBI against those mob guys, or who they say they were, to try to protect myself and others. That's the story, and it's not a new story. I wrote about it in my book, Go and Tell Pharaoh, back in 1996. And it's been reported in the press before. I did the right thing working with authorities. I didn't consider myself, quote, an informant. Wasn't told I was that. Well, nobody told him, but he had the uh, C C CI-7, uh, I believe. Uh, do I have that right? Anyway, um, Al Sharpton denying that he was a rat. For the FBI, joining us now is uh, Jeffrey Lickman, former attorney who got uh, John Gotti Jr. Well, well, attorney who got John Gotti Still Jr. Attorney. Still attorney, but you got John Gotti yes. Jr. in a former uh, uh, time uh, acquitted, and among other things. Great to great to finally meet you. Thanks for having me for a long time. Okay, so um, the smoking gun reports today that uh, Sharpton is lying and he's trying to put the best spin possible on the fact that he was an FBI informant. Yeah. First of all, let me say, having worked with Bill Bastone many times in the past. He's probably the smartest guy on the planet. Everything that and he's Bill written is? is the head of the smoking gun. Right. Every single thing in, in his articles is absolutely correct. Now, I know Al Sharpton and have represented uh, many of the people around him. I can tell you that he's trying to put a spin on for his own purposes of self-preservation. Not that he's afraid he's going to be killed, but he doesn't want to lose that street credibility that ostensibly, I suppose, he has. But the truth is, Steve, I mean, really, if anybody can believe a word that he says post Tawana Brawley, then you're a fool to begin with. Well, I, I couldn't agree with you more. And how he is where he is and how he got there, and that's a whole other story. But you talk about it, that's interesting because, uh, I mean, you've dealt with, the, you know, the Gotti family, et cetera, and all that. But wouldn't they know? I mean, if, if he was going to if he was going to get if he was going to be in trouble physically. Uh, from the mob, and that's what he fears. Wouldn't they, have, wouldn't they have known this before this official story came out? Wouldn't the mob have known or, or all along that he was a rat or not necessarily? No, they wouldn't necessarily know until it was revealed in papers. But the thing that doesn't make any sense from Sharpton's side of the story is that he claims that he was taping this large group of people because he was getting his life threatened. Now, if you go to the FBI and say, look, I'm getting my life threatened because of the situation I'm in, it's certainly possible that they'll wire you up and ask you to capture the guy who's threatening you on tape mm. so they can then use that evidence to indict the person who's making the threats. Problem is that when he has the guy on tape who supposedly is threatening him, there's never any discussion right of any threats. threats. There's yeah. never any anger, any rancor. The fact is, is Sharpton obviously got caught in a compromising position, and instead of facing a legal case, he decided to cooperate like so many other people of his ilk have done. And, you know, we've heard over the years uh, tax um, problems for Sharpton, for his organization, and, and uh, that he was in trouble, that he owed back taxes, etc. Uh, he claimed at one point he never made an income, remember? He didn't own anything. He didn't own the, he didn't own the, the watch, the medallion, nothing. Do you think that all ties in, that because uh, if he was an informant that they would let him off the hook? You know, normally I would say yes, because it does make some sense that if they were sort of keeping him safe. But I really, and I hate to say this, and I know that this is a family show, Steve, but this is really a product of white liberal guilt. The fact is, is we don't dare touch Al Sharpton because, after all, then we'll be perceived as racist. We don't dare talk about the Islamists that are trying to cut our throats as I speak because we don't want to offend them. Well, you just stated the now. Bush admin the, the, uh, the Obama administration philosophy and the Justice Department philosophy Absolutely. for a different reason, though. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> all right. I, I do want to show a, a video clip that we have uh, from 1983 of Al Sharpton allegedly negotiating a cocaine deal with an undercover FBI agent for what it's worth. Uh, let's uh, watch and listen to this. For about 35 this site. No, you chance. know what's a real... Yeah, we are, you know, I mean, uh, 10, 10 kilograms is like $350,000. That's a drop in the bucket, you know, we can go bigger. Every kilogram we bring in, 3,500 kilos. So this stuff. So if we bring in 10, you make 35000 but that's the best. That's the chicken pocket. He, he can, he can, he can, he's going to do what he'll do what he wants to do. 
See, that's the Al Sharpton that I used to see hanging around with uh, Don King tied at the hip when I used to go to uh, the fights at, at Trump Casino and all that. You know, that was Sharpton with the jumpsuit and the medallion and the, you know, the whole thing. Now, isn't that enough to get someone, if that's an FBI guy, then isn't that enough to get most people thrown in jail? Well, or certainly charged yeah. and certainly enough to make you feel that you have to be a cooperator to avoid being charged or put in jail. I mean, it looks like Huggy Bear there from uh, old Starsky and Hutch uh, era. <laughs> but look, you know, he, this is what he was in another life, and he doesn't deny the fact that he had sort of a, a sordid past to some degree. And look, he's gotten this far for whatever reason. I don't think this is anything worse than we've heard about him in the past. The tax issues, the Tawana Brawley, the fact that he was a drug dealer and a cooperator. Nobody seems to care. Freddy's, uh, you know, Freddy's right. where, they burnt, where the store wound up getting burnt down and people got killed. Seven right. people got killed. Uh, Greek homos, David Dinkins calling him the N-word. I mean, the you know, Crown Heights riots, the gr Korean grocery. Yep. I mean, the list goes on and on. Uh, now he's a great civil rights leader, of course. Um, let me ask you. That's fairly obvious. No, no, but I asked you, you said they might not have known uh, the, the, uh, until no this one, report. Listen, no one cares. I mean, okay. with all respect to Al Sharpton, and you know, well, let's take it for a fact that he's a great civil rights leader today. The mafia, or whatever exists of it today, certainly thinks of him as nothing more than a clown. Okay, fair enough. Um, let's move on, and let's talk about something we're both very passionate about, more so than Al Sharpton, yeah. certainly, and that is, um, and, you know, I call John Kerry the Palestinian spokesman, because that's, that's what he is. Well, he's getting his marching orders from Barack Hussein Obama, and, and John Kerry would do anything he has to do in order to keep his job. He wants that Nobel Prize. I mean, if he had to run over his mother uh, with his Bentley, he certainly would do he's it. He's not going to throw that one back at the White House, over the fence of the White House. <laughs> no, he's he certainly not going yeah. to. And look, Israel, in fairness to Kerry, made it very easy for him. The Palestinians agreed to nothing, absolutely nothing at the table. Israel was forced to rele uh, release a bunch of savage killer maniac terrorists. And in, in three different, and they, and they reneged on the fourth one. They were, and you know some of the truth is Israel should have released them because they did make the promise. Had they done that and could have controlled themselves with the settlement building, the whole world would have finally seen the Palestinians no, for what they are, no, they which is a bunch of Israel. frauds. Still still no Israel, not willing to make the tough choices. You released thousands of prisoners, as you alluded to, many of whom murdered Israeli women and children, yeah. and they, they go back and Abbas hugs them and treats them as heroes. And pays and, them. And Obama sits there and calls Abbas next to him a man of peace. Netanyahu he treats, treats like garbage. So they could have released every Palestinian prisoner in the world, and I believe they still would be the bad guy to this administration. No question, because Israel is always the fault. You know, if, if you don't do your homework on time, it's Israel's fault. If the sun <laughs> is in your eyes, it's Israel's fault. But look what they've done. They've, they've isolated Israel. Every ch chance they can get, they destroy Israel. They've hurt Egypt, which is oh one of the God. longest allies of America. Yep. Saudi Arabia, they, they've hurt. Jordan, they've Libya. hurt. But Libya, and look what they've done now. What they've done now, then, is 150,000 are slaughtered in Syria. We don't want to touch it. Why? Because we don't want to offend Iran. Iran. And Assad is friends with Iran. We don't want to offend. Iran is going to get the bomb. Nobody seems to care. All they're concerned about is how can we demonize Israel. But it's, the, it, 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 it's the support for the Muslim Brotherhood. The blatant, outright support is so frightening. Waleed Faris uh, sat here, the great uh, terrorism expert, uh, and I said to him, what, what, how do you explain that? He said... This was a, a Obama's goal from the beginning. They made a bet, and it failed, that uh, half of the Middle East was going to be run by Iran, and the other half was going to be run by the Muslim Brotherhood. And I said, where does that leave Israel? He said, by Rashid Khalidi, by Edward Said. I mean, Rashid yeah. Khalidi was the, the personal lapdog for Yasser Arafat. Yeah. He is an Islamist uh, propagandist, and he is the one who fed all the lies, all the to dribble, Obama. all the hatred to Obama. Yeah. That's his worldview, Steve. And, and they had that L.A. Times uh, had a film, a, a video before the first election of a joke being told supposedly about Israel or Jews at a function, and they would not. Well, Al Sharpton, a little Israel. Now, Al Sharpton might object to that uh, juxtaposition, but hey, you know, we do what we got to do right here on the Steve Malzberg Show. And uh, when we come back, you know what's next. It's going to be the uh, final Give Me Five of the hour. It's going to be part two of the David Letterman top ten liberal statements and comments provided by the Media Research Center. So don't miss it right here. Steve Malzberg Show on Newsmax Television. The Steve Malzberg Show.